Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest on the line right now. His album is out right now. Yes, sir. Ti. Yo. Welcome, sir. What's yeah. going on, bro? Tip, I think you done done it again, man. <laughs> I, I I fuck with the Libra album, Heavy Man, and 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 right now my favorite record on the album is Family Connect with with you and Damani. Yeah, hey, listen, bro. Um, I gotta say, man, I was shocked and surprised, and I mean, in in the most uh, uh, pleasant ways, man. I think that that that's the song. And you know what? I can honestly say that's a song I don't think hip hop has ever seen before. I was thinking about that when I was listening to it. I was like, has there ever been a father-son rap duo? Well, that Which both of them are actually dope. Well, Will Which Smith did it right Will, Will, Will do it. Will did it at one time, didn't he? Will and Jay did yeah, it. Yeah, Will, Will did it with Jay, but what we also must take into consideration is my other son actually produced the record. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Did the I didn't know that. Oh, so it's a real yeah. family affair on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have to pay yeah. them, Tip? Did you have to pay them, Ti? Did I? Yeah, I paid them. I paid them. I paid them. I, I wouldn't be mad. I, 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 I wouldn't be mad. Yeah, I know. It. I mean, you know, it, nepotism. You know, it's, you know, it's our little <laughs> taste of nepotism. You did. <laughs> they live in the house you together, or did you send your verse over, and then Zamani had to send his verse back? How did that work? No, nah, man. You know the way it actually happened, bro. Um. Damani and I was sitting in a session, uh, was sitting, Damani and I was sitting with Messiah as Messiah was like, yo, let me, let me let y'all hear something. So he was just going through beats kind of like, you know, after a while, it probably was a time where I had been, been a, I had been going away, like out of town for a second. Mm -hmm. And I came back and then, you know what I'm saying? Kind of, we sat down at the, at the studio and Messiah, you know, wanted basically as, as Damani and I kind of like, man, let me let y'all hear this, check this out. And we listening to his beats and kind of like, we like, yeah, that's dope, that's dope, okay. You know what I'm saying? That's, you know, I, the money, yeah, like, man, I want that one. And I said, man, I want that one. Uh, and then we're telling him, you know, maybe you need to work a little bit more on this one. And one of the records that I chose, like, it was one of the, like, the money and me, like, kind of like saying that one to the same record. And then I, Coincidentally, had to dip up at the studio to go do something. And when I, I think by the time I came back, the money had and I already recorded the verse. Mm. I was like, mm, he's trying to take this record from me. <laughs> and I, when I heard him do his verse, when I came back, I figured I better put my verse on here now. So, you know, ain't no confusion about who gonna have this record. And so I got, I, I got on it. And then it was it was a verse from him and a verse from me. And it was dope. Y'all got such but a dope. Know, we didn't know what we were gonna do with it because I didn't have no plans of putting that in no album. Y'all had such <laughs> a dope back and forth though. And it's like, I'm sitting there thinking on the song, he's rapping about how, you know, you are his daddy, but he don't want to, you know, he don't want your help. So I'm like, damn, what was the what was the process of this record then? Cause it sounded like y'all was, you was coaching him on the record. Nah, bro. Like he did his verse. He, he did his verse by himself. I did my verse by myself. Every verse, like we were never in the studio with one another wow. while we were recording our verses. Now you said you didn't have plans to do an album. So what? What? What made you decide to do an album? People, people telling me, man, you may well go. You need to put this out. When is this coming out? Stop bullshitting. Like you need to go ahead and put this out. And after months of that. And then I kind of was like, I, well, actually in August, August, it was actually after, um, I think MLK or something, like some kind of way we decided to do Ring. I don't remember what made us- Ring is tough to, too, Ring is hard. Yeah, like, but Ring is two years old damn near. Really? Yeah, yeah. I've been holding that record for a year and a half, two years. So you knew what it was when you recorded, though. You say, "Oh, this is a record. This is a hit. I'll just hold this in until I finish it the project." I'm just holding it. I was just making records for me and my partners to enjoy. You know what I'm saying? I make records and I play them when we all in the studio. And uh, after so long, um, everybody would just kind of bombard me with, "Yo, bro, when you putting that out? When you putting that out?" And I like, let's just say, if we was in the studio tonight and I play the records, and then if you call me back tomorrow, like. For real though, you go put these records, you go put them out. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know I mean, so after so much of that, 
I just kind of figured, man, you know what I mean? It's time to go and get it done. Gotcha. Now you got very reflective and I wanted to ask you, do you think now you found your life's purpose? I've been having my life purpose. I don't, I, I don't believe that, um, I think now I'm getting to listen more to myself and be in tune with the universe. But I've been, I, I've, I've always known that my life purpose is using uh, my gifts to, to bring people together and lead people to, to, you know, a certain perspective. Using my testimony to help walk people and navigate them through their tough times, you know what I mean? Gotcha. And you always felt like that from, from, from since the young? Well, no, I think that my life purpose was different at different moments in time in my life. You know what I mean? I think earlier, my life purpose was, you know, get you, being a testimony. I had to go through the stuff in order to be able to use it. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think uh, you were going to be a professor? I see you're teaching at Clark Atlanta University. <laughs> Do you ever see that as everything that you went through, that I'm going to be a professor, that I'm going to be a, a teacher? No, but I was a teacher first in prison. What yeah. class did you teach in prison? Uh, what was it? Thinking outside the box, I believe it was called. You know, what, what is saying? that about? Yeah. Man, it was about how to use. I was, I was showing people how to use the skills that they've already acquired on the streets. The same skills that they acquired on the streets that, that, that got them their charges. Mm -hmm. How to use those skills and, and identify those skills and purpose them. Uh, for legitimate means when they got back out on the streets. And that's the most fucked up thing about the, about the whole correctional system, right? They don't take these skill sets that these brothers clearly have right. and help, the util help, the, help them to direct that energy to something positive. Right, well, first of all, I mean, I think because that's the system that's set up for free labor, it ain't really about rehabilitation. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't about identifying skills and, and, you know, targeting things that are, that are keep people from, from that stop recidivism is 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 designed to you know to increase recidivism mm -hmm. so i think when you look you got to we got to identify and look at the true purpose of the system now what are you teaching in this class at the Clark Atlanta University is it the music industry is it business is it entrepreneurship yes 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 is it fatherhood <laughs> is it what fatherhood <laughs> Oh, uh, I mean, I'm, if they need to know that, we could, we could talk about it. But however, I think, nah, man, it's the business of trap music. That's the course. And, mm -hmm. um, and basically, we, 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 we go over the business of trap music, but the first course was about targeting the need for the business of trap music. Any gotcha. business is supply and demand, profit and loss, right? But in order mm -hmm. to supply a demand, you gotta you gotta recognize the need for the demand of the you know the like why is this so important in the first mm -hmm. place? And so we go back in time and just say, okay, so when did trapping start? You know what I'm saying? What made this so important to our community? What made because you know so many people are able to relate to trap music because so many so many people relate to to the trap mm -hmm. and why? So then we just go back and say, okay, so you know that a black family can work the same amount of hours a week as a white family and then come home and still not have enough for all the bills and all the needs for the household to be met. So that means that for generations, our families and households have had to step outside of just the normal everyday workforce and find other, uh, 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 just other means of income just to make ends meet. And, you know, that's why, you know what I'm saying, so many of us know what trapping is. That's why there's always been from 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 heroin, or it's actually from prohibition, we went back then to mm -hmm. heroin, uh, to, to running numbers, um, to, you know, cocaine to crack, to now opioids, you know what I mean? I think we've always had to step outside of, of, of a normal nine to five work schedule in order just to make our remedial needs met. Right. We cover that first. Gotcha. We just started this off by telling you happy birthday too, by the way, because we haven't had a chance to speak to you. You are a Libra. Obviously, the album is a, <laughs> about that, but happy birthday. That's it. I don't appreciate that, you. Mm -hmm. So what are your Libra characteristics? Because my mom's a Libra, my brother, my best friend are all Libras. And I want to hear from you. 
what is it like about TI that makes you a Libra? What a uh, I think that's my diversity. I think the thing about me that everybody's like, yo, he's all over the place. You know what I mean? He's this, he's this, he's this, he does this, he does. I think that's that's the Libra in me. You know what I mean? Being diverse, like multitasking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Handling so many things at once and being able to just apply my attention, my strengths, my energy to so many different things at one time without kind of letting any of, of the balls fall. You dig? Do, do, do you think people forgot how influential you were to trap music because you diversified your portfolio so much? Yeah, absolutely. I think the same thing for hip hop. Mm -hmm. um, man, anytime you got somebody that focuses and only does this, all of their energy, all of their attention, all of their efforts go toward this one thing. Anytime you consolidate that and people can, every time they see you, they only see you doing this. Um, they're gonna always reference and relate you to this. And as much as you divide that, you know what I'm saying? People just, you know, they're gonna kind of like associate you with so many things that the person that they associate with only this, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna give that the most consideration. And that's human nature. And I understand that. That's why whenever people do these lists, I don't ever put myself on the list because just to be honest with you, there's so many other people who dedicated their lives to only just rap, to just do rap. Mm -hmm. it's, it's people that dedicated their lives to only to, to just do trap music. You know what I mean? And I think that's that's kind of why they get the consideration first. And I ain't got no problem with that. But just, but just know at any given moment, any given time, I'm gonna remind you why 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 I am who I am and, and remind you that I do what I do. Yeah, because every rapper's not out there with, with a rifle shooting at monsters at Monster Hunter. Now you got you gotta talk about Monster Hunter. I well, see you scared Monster the Hunter. shit out of me just then. <laughs> <laughs> you're, like, you're like, what video was out there of me shooting? Man, <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you saying? Yeah. I, I seen the trailer for a new movie that you're doing, Monster Hunter. Now, now talk about this movie, because this, you know, when the movie starts, it's, it's like you guys in the military, and then all of a sudden, monsters start popping out of all types of places, and you shooting monsters, you running from monsters. Talk yeah. about this movie a little bit. Uh, well, first of all, it's an adaptation uh, from a video game. Mm -hmm. It's a, a video game that like blew up in Japan and Asia. It didn't do so well in America, and you know, I'm gonna trip you out, but uh, America said it was too difficult. It was, you know, it was too too hard. So it didn't get, they, they calling us dumb on the low. But <laughs> mm -hmm. they said that it was too hard, it didn't catch on in America, but it was a huge, huge sensation in, uh, in Asia. And so the, the, you know, it's basically, the film is about, you know, a platoon of military, uh, a military team that's responding to another team disappearing, right? So they going back to the last place that this team was seen. Right. Um, and when they do that, it's kind of like they follow a, a, a track, some, uh, some tire tracks to a point where the tire tracks just disappear. And so, you know, we right there, we looking for, you know what I'm saying? We looking for the team and then all of a sudden we see a storm coming and we think it's a storm, but it's really a, 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 a portal to another dimension. And we, you know, we kind of like end up in this, uh, whirlwind, a, a, a sandstorm. How did they explain that movie to you? Like, how was that explanation? Because when I seen it, I'm like, what the hell is going on? So I could imagine how they had to explain it to you to, for you to sign on to do it. Uh, nah, they really just said that it was a video game. And then you know, <laughs> the, the, same, the, the same director and star from Resident Evil gotcha. was going to be present and that it was kind of going to be on some Resident Evil type shit. And I, and I, I rock with Resident Evil. And I kind of identified with the video game and with the film. And they also told me uh, that, that Cuz had them, he made he made Street Fighter. Oh. Know, was it Street Fighter? Yeah, he made Street Fighter back in the day. So I'm like, oh, okay, so is it Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat? I don't remember. Huh, it was Street Fighter? Yeah, so, so I just kind of was like, okay, so video games, that's his thing. And gotcha. anytime you have somebody that kind of like, you know, has a passion, a genuine interest for something, I just automatically feel that they gonna do good at that, you know what I mean? Gotcha. Uh, so I signed up to do it and I, you know, it was 
one of the best experiences as an actor that I've ever had. Wow. Burp. I, I want to go back to the people who were disrespecting you a little bit, Tip. When you when you challenged 52 of Versus, some people were saying Tip tripping, and then when you said you had five classic albums, people said you were tripping. Did that response put a fire under you for that for this yes. album? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, uh, and one thing, like, I, you know what, I think for me to talk about myself and how it affected me, you know, that's... I just feel like that's self gratuitous. I don't think it's, it's it is as important as us telling young people, don't never let nobody tell you what level you're supposed to play on. You dig what I'm saying? Don't mm -hmm. never let nobody tell you, you know, who you can and can't be. Don't let nobody talk you out your victory. If you lose, let it be because you showed up and got beat. You know what I mean? Don't mm -hmm. beat yourself. Don't let nobody else beat you with they with their opinion. You know what I mean? And I, I mean, I think that, and most of the people who had these opinions, you know, you gotta, cause the opinion is only as strong as the person that it's coming from. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If I give you an opinion on something that I have absolutely no awareness of, then my opinion ain't really valid. It ain't really worth a lot. So you can't give people uh, with the least amount of information, the most consideration. Uh, and I think it's a lot of people who were kind of like, weren't even, from the culture of trap music. It wasn't even from the culture of this generation, of my generation, I mean. Speaking on it as though they, you know what I'm saying, as though they had so much intel. Uh, and speaking on me, like they knew, you know what I mean? If you if you don't, if you ain't never even heard of T.I., you know, I heard people say something like, who's ever heard, who's ever said put on that T.I.? Yo mama, Shit. nigga. Yo mama. <laughs> <laughs> That's Do it, baby. Nigga. Stick it, baby. <laughs> the bitch that had you. The bitch that thought enough of you to have you. That is great. Is the one. And the, and the nigga that thought enough of her to nut in her. That is who said, let's play some T.I. And I think, I just felt like, man, you know, they only feel that way because, you know what I'm saying, in their young lives, like, what have I done aside from, you know, film and television and, and social activism what have I done? What have I given them, you know what I'm saying, to actually bring them up to speed of who I am and what I do? So I think that's kind of what nudged me to say, anytime to make another contribution. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't think Paper Trail was that long ago, though, for people to oh, act it was like they were. that long ago. It was definitely that long ago. Just think about it. What was Paper Trail? 15 years ago? No, man. Paper it Trail? 12. It was 10, 12, something like that. Yeah. It was 2008. It was 12 years ago. Yeah, damn time be flying. So think about it, if you tw if you if you're 20 years old right now, paper trail, you were eight years old. You wouldn't yeah, even yeah. decide what music you could listen to on your own. Right. Yeah. You know I mean? So I guess they thought I was a one hit wonder. They heard about the money. They say, oh yeah, he was a one hit wonder. He came out, he had about the money. We ain't heard of, we ain't heard from him no more. I, I guess that's how they felt. Uh and which is cool. But I think like when the music industry changed. I, you know, it was a paradigm shift. It shifted from certain modes of operation to the way it is, you know, the way, the way it operates today. Uh, the streaming revolution and the way that it changed the industry kind of made me take a step back and rather than take record labels words for it. Oh yeah, this is how it works. Yeah, 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 we're just gonna do it this way. Yeah, it's okay. And you know, I didn't know where the money, like when they started paying people for streams, I didn't know where the money was coming from. I didn't know where it was going. I didn't know, you know, like for instance, let's just take videos, for example. Mm -hmm. A record label never came to me and said, hey, you know we're getting paid for videos now. That's something I had to find out on my own. Mm -hmm. right? Because you, before you know, videos were just an investment. It was like you were paying to, to, to you know, to I'm produce a commercial mm -hmm. for people to want to buy your album. Mm -hmm. And there was no, like, it wasn't a stream of revenue at the time. It wasn't a business. So I didn't understand that I had to come into that understanding on my own. Nobody from a record label would tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, you know we're getting paid for videos now. So it's, it's all that type of stuff that I had to step back from the game and learn myself. Because when nobody gonna just volunteer this information to me, especially in no building, and no, you know, in no record label. And it's that and other things that I feel like I needed to step away from from a record label, from you know, uh, the industry to learn 
so I could use it to my advantage. Well, I saw you and uh, I saw you and Jeezy talking on the Expeditiously podcast, and you know, you you this is a, you both mentioned that, well, you mentioned that you would love to sit down and have a conversation with Gucci. Did, did anything? I come didn't say you? I would love to. Well, not love I to. The people would love. People I want to. That, you know, trap music would benefit greatly from it, and that's the only like that's the thing that you know. Like now trap music is getting to be where it's about a generation old, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so now it's about what's new. So everybody like kind of knows what to expect from it. It's at a place where now, you know, what is new? Like what, what, what's refreshing? What's, what can you do exciting? You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And once you, and I just as a, you know, a, a, a marketing, uh, executive, I would say, once you've sold as many tickets as you can to the fight, the only thing left to sell is tickets to the reunion. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, so, Did anything come from that? Did Nah. Uh -uh. Okay. I mean, like, I, it, wasn't, it was just conversation, though. It was never mm -hmm. like a plan, you know what I'm saying? A phase one, phase two, phase three type plan. It was just conversation, because I know that's what people, a lot of people who follow trap music and who are inspired by the culture, who follow the culture. You know what I mean? They 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 recognize us as the architects of it. You know what I mean? So usually when you have people who you identify as the architects of a certain uh, a certain uh, industry, you want to see them work together. Like mm -hmm. for instance, it, with technology, it was it was Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. And it was always like, damn, are those motherfuckers ever gonna work together on something? Mm -hmm. And they never did. And life moved on. You dig what I'm saying? But if ever the time, you know, Microsoft and Apple ever came together, then you know what I'm saying, I think that'd be a pretty big deal. You, you tapped in with all the youngins for this project too. You got Lil Baby and Thug and 42 Doug. You got Rhapsody on the interlude, Tokyo yeah. Jets. Was, was that intentional? Lil Baby record hard too. Yeah, appreciate that, man. Yeah, I mean, some of it was and some of it wasn't. So the part where you're talking about like, you know, Thugger and, and Lil Baby and 42 Doug, you know, in Mazi, yes, that was intentional. Uh, Rhapsody, we just stumbled on that, you know what I'm saying? I think I, for some reason, I just kind of, I think I, I was speaking to Rhapsody about something and then she crossed my mind. I reached out to her, just gave her a cold call one day, like, hey, if you were to do some spoken word about me, yes, what would it sound like? What would you say? She's like, what do you mean? What you talking about, King? I say, no, no, listen. If you were to do some spoken word about me to put on an album, like, what would you say? So then she asked me a few questions about the title of the album. And she asked me, you know, to hear some songs. I sent her a couple songs. And overnight, she did what you heard. Wow. You know? Um, and I mean, she just kind of set us on the path to, I got it. And then and after I heard her, that's when I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get all women to do this. You know what I'm saying? Because it tied in to the, to the, to the album cover at that point. You know what I mean? And you got Kinda. Asia on there too, doing the conclusion. Yeah. That was the huge, that was the biggest surprise. That was the biggest shock and surprise of my life. I never expected Deja to do that. Really? I you didn't sit out for her to nah, <laughs> Look, so I got, I had Rhapsody and I, I, I spoke to Ernestine. She said she was gonna do it. And so I kind of, kind of like when Ernestine said, "Yeah, I'll be there tomorrow, no problem." Da, 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 da. I said, "I bet." So I was around Deja, like, uh, <laughs> "I got if you want to speak for the women of your generation, I got a spot for you." <laughs> and you know, I was just kind of throwing it away. Just you know, I never expected her to say, "I have something to say." <laughs> I have something to say. Well, let's hear it. Yeah, you know I mean, and I, I gave her a deadline. I, mean, I said, all right, cool. Let's see if it was Thursday. I said, all right, cool. Get with me by Sunday, noon. And she said, okay. And that just that for damn sure, by Sunday at noon, she get she got it to me. Wow. And it it was I was blown away. That's you know that gotta I mean? be a proud papping moment. Ah uh, man, <laughs> just to, I mean, for real, bro. Like for one, okay, so Deja and I have you know, uh, for most of her life, how can I say this? 
I, and I'm very careful with my words, especially when speaking about danger. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. um, when she came into that point in her life where, hmm, you know, kind of the transition phase in your life when that thing that girls do every month happens. When we get our period. I, I see, I wasn't gonna say that. You dig what I'm saying? I wasn't gonna say that. But when you like, so when Deja made it to that point in her life, from that point forward, we kind of hadn't spoken as much. I hadn't had, we didn't have as much of an ability to, you know, to speak freely to one another uh, for whatever reason. And, you know, over the past year, we, we gained, we, we got closer, you know what I mean? We kind of found a rhythm. And this is kind of like a testament of that, you know what I'm saying? And especially with all of the stuff that we've gone through over the past year, um, you know, with Heimengate and all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that every relationship will be tested. Mm -hmm. I don't care who is with your relationship with your mom, relationship with your girl, with your wife, with your whoever, every relationship, uh, it will be tested. And and that test is going to strengthen it or weaken it. You know what I mean? Depending on the people and how much they value the relationship and if they value it enough to work on it, you know what I mean? To do the things that, you, that it takes to take the necessary steps to get through whatever the test is. And I think the thing that, that, that she and I went through last year, uh, that was our test, you did. And we took the necessary steps, you know, and we and we got through it, um, you know, not in spite of everyone else's kind of play by play uh, speculation of it all, you know, in spite of all that, she and I always remained connected, you know. What I mean, she and I always had an understanding, you know. I would, we would speak and we would, you know, share share our opinions with each other about what was going on, like in the media as it pertained to that. Uh, and you know, she always told me, man, it ain't our, it ain't our job to really talk to nobody and tell them what we feel about anything. That ain't our job. If that's what they think, let them think it. So what? You know, I was like, yeah, all right, man, cool. Uh, and this, and getting to this point where she actually chose to speak and make reference to the, sh the, the, the things that we were going through or that we have gone through. I just, you know, I, I mean, I, as a moment of reflection, it kind of like, damn, we made it. You know what I'm saying? Is that a, um, a hard episode for you to watch? Because I ain't gonna lie, I teared up a little bit when I was watching that episode on TV when y'all was kind of going through it because it made me think about my relationship with my own father. So was that hard for you to watch? Um, I mean... He was so hurt, you know? Yeah, yeah, uh, I think that it was hard to go through. And I think that the time that lapsed between when we went through it and when it aired, it was like a six, eight month time period. So it was all, it, it was all but over with for us. You know, we made it through, like we were done with it. Uh, and even people were done talking about it for the most part. And here comes family hustle, stirring <laughs> the pot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and brought it back up. But I mean, you know what I'm saying? I think at the end of the day, man, the value of it, the value of the episode is it documents a moment that helps others who may find themselves in similar positions right. uh, to help them make it through. They, they, they give them some point of reference to say, okay, well, if you're in this position, here's how, I, you know, Tip and his daughter made it through. And I think that the, the value. There's the value of that to me is kind of like ir that's that that is is irreverent. You know the be the best part about y'all situation, man. You know even me having three daughters is just when you see your kids get older and they so grounded, man. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I mean? Like they just got good old fashioned common sense. Like even when Damani said on on Family Connect, he said, "Tell them stop asking all them questions. The answers in my songs." Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? Place the pen in my left hand and watch me write my right. Like he just they just got good old fashioned common sense. I got lucky, bro. I can't even, <laughs> I got lucky, my man. I, I don't know how all of my kids became so, except King, became so humble, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like how they all did not, you know, just allow themselves to run wild 
you know, as a rich kid. I just, if I was a rich kid, bro, I would have gotten in so much trouble, man. I'm talking about so much. I'd have rent cars. I'd have, I'd have probably burnt down houses. I'd have done a gang and shit that they ain't even interested in doing, except King. You know what I'm saying? What's King, man? You know what's King doing? King got the tip. He got the little badass tip gene. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. King has that. He got that part of me that doesn't adequately uh, equate danger. So he just kind of go and he's extreme. He'll do. He'll he'll tell you, yeah, I jump off what that that building. Yeah, I think I can do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Like he got that thing in him, and you know that that kind of fearlessness. Uh, well, the beauty of that is that you got somebody that can do your stunts in movies now, then. Or play me as a youngster because yeah. just so Messiah and Demani, they look a lot like me. You know what I'm saying? Whereas King acts a lot like me. <laughs> you dig? Um, so if I were to do a movie uh, or a film, or as, actually I'm, I'm writing a, a series about um, young Tip, teenage Tip, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old, right? And you know, that, that with me and all my partners and all of the antics and the things we went through and how it led up to me becoming T.I. It's called Once Upon a Time in the 90s. No. So, I'm thinking about, so if somebody has to play me in that, King got the energy. I'd rather get somebody who has the, like the real essence of the energy and can give me that nuance. I'd rather have that to have gotcha. somebody, you know, who look exactly like me. Nice. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Uh, I feel like Messiah and Demani, they, they act more like me now. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And King kind of, you know, he, he, he captures the essence of who I was at that moment in my life and that scares me scares <laughs> me <laughs> well ti we appreciate you for checking in the album is out right. right now and thank you for checking in brother man thank you guys for having me man you know what i'm saying salute now wait a minute we're not gonna get out of here before we get before we before we first of all mention the fact that we have uh uh tamika mallory on this record called horizons mm -hmm. oh yes sir mm -hmm. and she chose to she she actually uh chose to share her perspective, her position, you know what I'm saying, uh, as the leader of the revolution for this generation. And I think that's also dope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you talked about the four agreements on that song, Farrakhan and meditation. I said, it's a man after my own heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> uh, you know, my meditation is a little bit different from yours, you know what I'm saying? My meditation is like a joint and a cup of tea and sitting down, and, you know what I'm saying? You're not hugging you know? <laughs> You know, that's kind of like how I get down. But I mean, but T helps though. Anytime I have a conundrum, anytime I have like, you know, a conflict or something, I sit down and I have some tea. And usually by the end of the cup, I be done came up with something. And I don't know if it's the fact of from the time it takes it from to get too hot, you know what I'm saying, to where it's like warm. That that time as it laps, my mind calms and kind of begins yep. to slow down and kind of harnesses or, or, or hones in on uh, a solution. You do oh, I do a cup of sour sop tea at night. Sour sop tea. What's sour sop now? Sour sop is a, is a fruit. Uh, Dr. Sebi used to swear by it. It got a lot of healing properties and stuff. Helps okay. your immune system. Yeah, all everything. Yeah, sour okay. sop ice cream. I mean, give us some sour sop. You know what I'm saying? Put me, you know. Put me <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? Make sure we get put out on that. Yeah, but that, that that like that's an incredible moment. I don't think that, you know, I don't think the hip hop and you know our leaders in the social justice movement have have worked together uh, so seamlessly uh, up until this point. You know what I mean? I think that it was always a divide, you know, and you had it to where kind of like, okay, Reverend Al Shot and we're reaching out to us. Mm -hmm. We were like, yeah, 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 we'll do it, yeah, whatever, whatever. You had it where Jesse Jackson was reaching out to us and, you know, he was like, mm, what happened with Martin, nigga? You know what I'm saying? But- uh, Tamika we, from yeah. us. Uh, Tamika is from our culture. She's from she's our generation. She's from our culture. She's really our, our, our partner. Like she's mm -hmm. our home girl, like she's our sister. So that it allows for a more hand in hand, like interaction. 
Uh, and I think that that's going to benefit the movement. That's going to benefit the generation. You dig? Absolutely. And with, you know, Killer Mike and, and David Banner, and, you know, that record also, that's going to, you know what I'm saying? I think that's going to scare the shit out of white people. So, I, you know, I, I'm going to enjoy the sight of that. <laughs> um, I mean, for real, man. Anytime you get an opportunity to scare the shit out of white people, man, with a record, man, I say do it. Do it. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> No, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a really dope ass project, a solid album from top to bottom because I feel it really um it really shows all your all your dimensions effortlessly. That is you know that, I mean? was, that was the sole purpose because you know all those songs mean so many different things. You know, come from and speak from so many different perspectives. Mm -hmm. uh, so to have you know so many different voices and 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 have them being women of color, black women different generations, different walks of life, you know, um, with different ideologies uh, from comedian Miss Pat from Fair Street Bottle, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, to, to Rhapsody, to uh, Ernestine, to Tamika Mallory, to Deja, you dig what I'm saying? And all of them uh, women in my life that, that I have relationships with, different relationships, uh, for different reasons, they had to see me in different lights and that have uh, gained their independence and, and, you know, had to walk their line and, and, and press their issue in different ways at different times. Like, I think that is, that to me, you know what I'm saying, that's the, that's, that's, that's the, the, the sweet spot of this project. It's like listening to three albums in one because you go from trap music to just kind of hip hop lyricism, like hardcore rap shit into like us or else elevated consciousness, mm -hmm. like a more socially responsible version of TI. Like, so I think all of those things, to be able to be all of those things at one time, that's the Libra in me. Yes. All right. Word. Well, thank you, Tip, for checking Always in. A pleasure. Album is out right, right now. Make sure y'all get it, y'all stream Peace, it. King. It's the Breakfast yes, Club. Yes, sir.